of deep reinforcement learning for traffic light control in vehicular networks. As usual, the review today is presented in three parts. Let's begin with the motivation. The problem this paper wants to solve is that how to decide the traffic signal's duration based on the collected data from different sensors and vehicular networks. Here is a strange work for us, the vehicular networks. Literally, vehicular networks comprise vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle and vehicle-to-infrastructure -infra communications based on wireless local network technologies. That means that with vehicle network, we can get uh, much more uh, traffic data in reality. The paper points out several limitations on traffic light control. As for the traditional method, the fixed programs are deployed without considering real-time traffic or to a very limited degree. In addition, the input to control program are processed in a very coarse way. That, that means that the, the data we collected are not used carefully. And then the low efficiency for real-time response made the traditional method lacks particle. As for reinforcement learning method for traffic light control, in the past studies, the state definition is not accurate enough, and the duration of green red lines can only be multiple fixed length interval. That means that the reinforcement learning index way only considers small action space. And at last but not least, in the past study, the method changed traffic signal without considering the safety and comfortability of driver, which is not driver friendly, and so the policy in this way and the policy learning in this way is not good enough for traffic light control. Now let's begin the methodology review with the basic knowledge about traffic light control. First, here is a definition of traffic movement. A traffic movement refers to vehicles moving from an incoming approach to an outgoing approach. And when it comes to traffic signal, there is a definition of movement signal. A movement signal is defined on the traffic movement. If green signal indicating the corresponding movement is allowed, and the red signal indicating the movement is prohibited. Based on the definition above, we can have a more detailed statement in traffic signal control. First, we talk about phase. A phase is a combination of movement signals with the same moving permission. And then from phase, we have signal plan. A signal plan for a single intersection is a sequence of phases and their corresponding starting time. So that's the key words in traffic light control. And intuitively, the goal of traffic light control is to facilitate safe and efficient movement of vehicles at the intersection. Bearing this in mind, there are several measurements. The first is travel time. That's the time difference between the line one car enters the system and the time it leaves the system. The other measure is queue length, the number of queuing vehicles in the road network. And we have numbers of stops. The number of stops of a vehicle is the total times that a vehicle experienced before the intersection. And we have throwout. The, th the throwout is the number of vehicles that have completed their trip in the road network during the throwout period. Okay, after the review on traffic light control, we can come to the reinforcement learning now. The basic intuition of reinforcement learning is learning what to do or how to map situations to actions by playing with the environment so as to maximize the cumulative numerical reward signal. And Q-learning is one of the simplest reinforcement learning algorithm. Real Q can be regarded as a expected evaluation of an action given a state observation. What Q learning does is to evaluate all state action pairs value, which can be presented by a Q table here. 
After that, for each state, we, we can select the action with the largest Q value to play with the environment. And the solution to produce this table is by updating the elements in the table recursively using this formula. Here, the ISA plus 5 multiplied with max QSA is the target Q value. However, for problem in reality, the state space tends to be extremely large and upgrading subtract Q table could be a desperate task. To fill this gap, we use a function approximator to uh, estimate the Q value. When we apply the deep neural network on this problem, the DQN is formed. It should be pointed out that training for DQN is not an easy task. Before we apply DQN for a specific traffic control problem, we first review some training tricks or schemes for DQN as well as some advanced DQN structure. At first, we will have a look on the target network. Because the Q value for next day action period in the, uh, in the train procedure is based on estimation. Thus, using another new network whose parameters are not updated every time can make train procedure more stable. That's why the target network is introduced. The other tricks used in this paper is prioritized experience we play. At the original paper of DQN, the author suggests experience replayed. In this setting, we have a pool to record what the engine has experienced in the form of stay, action, resulting next day, and world. And then, during training projects, we select samples randomly in the pool. In this way, the sample could be independent, which may train feasible, since the overall procedure can be regarded as a maximum likelihood estimation. To take a step further, we don't select sample randomly for training. Instead, we select based on some rules with the hope for faster learning and better policy. The idea is putting different sampling priority to the memory, so a memory with high priority is more likely to be selected as a training sample. And in this paper, the author used training target as an index for calculating priority and rank the priority from small to large, noted as PI. In this way, the priority, or in other words, the probability, can be calculated when we uh, want to select the samples. Original DQN has some drawbacks, including unstable learning process and staking into local mid optimal easily. And recent years have remixed some DQN variants in pursuit of better learning performance. The first is storing DQN. While in DQN, the Q value is produced directly, but in doing DQN, it breaks this process into two parts. And it estimates state value and action advantage separately. The state value can be regarded as how good it will stand in a current state, and the action advantage is used to present a straightforward comparison among actions. The intuition is that in some cases, if we drop into a back state, no matter what we do, it does not help at all. In this situation, estimating state action value as a world could make no sense. And in this paper, the target Q value is calculated by state value function and advantage, action advantage in this formula. Another variance is double DQN. Here we first use training network to select action for next state and then estimate the state action value with target network. These variants are proved to be more efficient since it tends to avoid local optimization. Okay, now let's figure how the paper model traffic light control problem in the view of reinforcement learning. As we all know, a traditional reinforcement learning model consists of three basic elements, the state, the action, 
and the reward. Now let's begin with the state definition. Where intersection, it is divided into clicks in favor of analyzing numerically. Then the location of vehicles in the intersection is mapped to a position matrix. As you can see, when there is a, a one value in the matrix, it means that there is a vehicle in this position. Then finally, to give a detailed description of traffic state in the intersection, the author plug two value vector into the matrix. The vector consists of position and speed value, where the position is a binary value, which means that zero is equals to no vehicles in that grid, and one means that there is a vehicle in that grid. And the speed is record as an integer. Then we come to this action and reward definition. They are all uh, straightforward. For the action definition, the author suggested an action to be each phrase duration in the next cycle. And in detail, it, it is uh, perform this action by add or subtract 5 seconds to current duration, which means that it is a discrete action definition. And what's more, the author set max duration to 60 seconds and minimum duration to 0 seconds. And in this way, the action space is uh, much smaller and more feasible. And then there is a reward definition. The, the reward is, a, is the change of the cumulative waiting time between two neighboring cycles. And this, this reward is used to tell the agent that why it is good when uh, do the traffic light control. Finally, the author developed a text back to validate the model. In this text back, it includes two parts. The first part is the micro traffic simulation with SUMO. The SUMO is a major open source simulator that can provide useful API to text traffic control model. And the experiment is implemented in an intersection with area of 300 by 300 meter. And for each row, there is three lanes of 150 meter. And then the reinforcement learning algorithm is implemented with TensorFlow. And the measures to test the model includes two parts also. The first is a defined reward, which as mentioned before, and the other is the average waiting time of vehicles in different traffic scenario and specs with the rush hour, which is more meaningful for traffic light control. That's my reference for this review. And thank you for your attention. And I'm looking forward to hearing the suggestion and discussion from you all guys.